in recognition of the important role of the fisheries research in the development, management, conservation, and protection of country's fisheries and aquatic resources. It was established on February 1, 2001 as the primary research arm of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources and an attached agency of the Department of Agriculture and became part of the Department of Science and Technology. The overall governance of the Institute shall be vested in the Governing Board, which shall formulate policy guidelines for its operation. The composition of the Governing Board shall be as follows. Under Secretary for Fisheries as Chairman, before Director as Vice Chairman, and seven members which compose of the and if are the Executive Director, because are the Executive Director, representative from the Academe, and four representatives from the private sector who shall come from the Municipal Fisher Folk, Commercial Fishing Operator, Aquaculture Operator, and Post Harvest or Processor. Researches to be done by the end of RTI are expected to result in the following to raise the income of the fisher folk and to elevate the Philippines among the top five in the world ranking in fish productions, to make the country's fishing industry in the high seas competitive, to conduct social research on fisher folk families for a better understanding of their conditions and needs, and to coordinate with fishery schools, LGUs, and private sectors regarding the maximum utilization of available technology, including the transfer of such technology to the industry, particularly the fisher folk. As a national institute, the NFRDI shall have the following functions. Establish a national infrastructure unit, complete with technologically advanced features and modern scientific equipment, which shall facilitate, monitor, and implement various research needs and activities of the fishery sector. Provide a venue for intensive training and development of human resources in the field of fisheries, a repository of all fisheries researches and scientific information. Provide intensive training and development of human resources in the field of fisheries for the maximum utilization of available technology. Hasten the realization of the economic potential of the fishery sector by maximizing developmental research efforts in accordance with the requirements of the National Fisheries Conservation and Development Programs also possibly through collaborative effort with international institutions and formally establish, strengthen, and expand the network of fisheries researching communities through effective communication linkages nationwide. And if our DIA researches are being aligned with the comprehensive National Fisheries Industry Development Plan, a medium-term development plan which is an option of the Republic Act 8550, which covers programs in aquaculture, capture, Post harvest and marketing and trainings. Aquaculture includes fisheries biotechnology, feeds and nutrition, aquatic animal health, and farming systems and engineering. Capture includes ecological and economic studies on stocks and the impact of fishing methods and gears in coastal and inland ecosystems, including distant waters. Post harvest and marketing include fish handling and processing, product development seafood safety and quality, and trade of fish products. Also conduct and develop training and development programs in the field of fisheries for the institute internal and external stakeholders. To further implement the conduct of researchers, the NFRDI established its national centers. Freshwater Fisheries Research and Development Center, located in Botong, Taal, Batangas. The center conducts researches, development, and extension services in freshwater fisheries. The center serves as the main repository of researches in Taal Lake and is involved in the conservation efforts of the lake and its resources. Marine Fisheries Research and Development Center located in Giwan, Eastern Samar. The center conducts researches, development and extension services in marine water fisheries. They undertake socioeconomic studies and livelihood and income diversification program and apply the research and development projects in coordination with the academy and other research institutions. Brackish Fisheries Research and Development Center, located in Lala, Lanao del Norte. The center conducts researches, development and extension services in brackish water fishery. Develop grow technology appropriate for brackish water species and improvement of quality seed supply and broodstock. To know more about the NFRDI, please do visit our official website at nfrdi.da.gov.ph or follow us through our social media accounts at NFRDI Philippines. Thank you and God bless us all.
Good day to our esteemed participants. Before we start, here are some video conferencing etiquette that needs to be observed during the meeting. First, be on time. Make sure to be in the virtual room 5 minutes before the set time and ensure that your devices and technology works perfectly. Second, mute yourself when not speaking. This is to eliminate unnecessary background noises that may interrupt the meeting. Third, find a private space or spot with minimal to no distraction so you can devote your whole attention to the matter being discussed. Fourth, if you do have headphones, kindly use them to ensure audio clarity. Lastly, chat responsibly. If you do have any questions or concerns regarding the presentation, please feel free to type them down on the chat box. Thank you. Good day to our esteemed participants. Before we start, here are some video conferencing etiquette that needs to be observed during the meeting. First, be on time. Make sure to be in the virtual room 5 minutes before the set time and ensure that your devices and technology works perfectly. Second, mute yourself when not speaking. This is to eliminate unnecessary background noises that may interrupt the meeting. Third, find a private space or spot with minimal to no distraction so you can devote your whole attention to the matter being discussed. Fourth, if you do have headphones, kindly use them to ensure audio clarity. Lastly, chat responsibly. If you do have any questions or concerns regarding the presentation, please feel free to type them down in the chat box. Thank you. The National Fisheries Research and Development Institute was created by virtue of Section 82 of the Republic Act No. 8550, otherwise known as the Philippine Fisheries Code of 1998, in recognition of the important role of the fisheries research in the development, management, conservation, and protection of country's fisheries and aquatic resources. It was established on February 1, 2001 as the primary research arm of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources and an attached agency of the Department of Agriculture and became part of the Department of Science and Technology. The overall governance of the Institute shall be vested in the Governing Board, which shall formulate policy guidelines for its operation. The composition of the Governing Board shall be as follows. Under Secretary for Fisheries as Chairman, before Director as Vice Chairman, and seven members which compose of the, and before the Executive Director, Pika Art Executive Director, representative from the Academe, and four representatives from the private sector who shall come from the Municipal Fisher Folk, Commercial Fishing Operator, Aquaculture Operator, and Post-Harvest or Processor. 
Researches to be done by the end of our DI are expected to result in the following. To raise the income of the fisher folk and to elevate the Philippines among the top five in the world ranking in fish productions. To make the country's fishing industry in the high seas competitive. To conduct social research on fisher folk families for a better understanding of their conditions and needs. And to coordinate with fishery schools, LGUs, and private sectors regarding the maximum utilization of available technology, including the transfer of such technology to the industry, particularly the fisher folk. As a national institute, the NFRDI shall have the following functions. Establish a national infrastructure unit, complete with technologically advanced features and modern scientific equipment, which shall facilitate, monitor, and implement various research needs and activities of the fishery sector. Provide a venue for intensive training and development of human resources in the field of fisheries, a repository of all fisheries researches and scientific information. Provide intensive training and development of human resources in the field of fisheries for the maximum utilization of available technology. Hasten the realization of the economic potential of the fishery sector by maximizing developmental research efforts in accordance with the requirements of the National Fisheries Conservation and Development Program. Also possibly through collaborative effort with international institutions. And formally establish, strengthen, and expand the network of fisheries research communities through effective communication linkages nationwide. And if our DI researches are being aligned with the Comprehensive National Fisheries Industry Development Plan, a medium-term development plan which is an option of the Republic Act 8550, which covers programs in aquaculture, capture, post-harvest and marketing, and training. Aquaculture includes fisheries biotechnology, feeds and nutrition, aquatic animal health, and farming systems and engineering. Capture includes ecological and economic studies on stocks and the impact of fishing methods and gears in coastal and inland ecosystem, including distant waters. Post-harvest and marketing include fish handling and processing, product development, seafood safety and quality, and trade of fish products. Also conduct and develop training and development programs in the field of fisheries for the institute internal and external stakeholders. To further implement the conduct of researchers, the NFRDI established national centers. Freshwater Fisheries Research and Development Center, located in Butong Taal, Batangas. The center conducts researches, development, and extension services in freshwater fisheries. The center serves as the main repository of researches in Taal Lake and is involved in the conservation efforts of the lake and its resources. Marine Fisheries Research and Development Center, located in Giwan, Eastern Samar. The center conducts researches, development and extension services in marine water fisheries. They undertake socioeconomic studies and livelihood and income diversification program and apply the research and development projects in coordination with the academy and other research institutions. Brackish Fisheries Research and Development Center, located in La La Lanao del Norte. The center conducts researches, development and extension services in brackish water fisheries develop grout technology appropriate for brackish water species and improvement of quality seed supply and broodstock. To know more about the NFRDI, please do visit our official website at nfrdi.ba.gov.ph or follow us through our social media accounts at NFRDI Philippines. Thank you and God bless us all. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope all of us had a delicious lunch. Ayan, pagkatapos po natin busugin ang ating katawan, ngayon naman ay busugin natin ang ating isipan. First, we would like to welcome all our participants today coming from all over the country. So since our first webinar, we always have representatives from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Magandang tanghali po sa ating lahat. I also would like to acknowledge our participants coming from Kota Kinabalu and Sabah, Malaysia. So they also registered in our webinar too and I hope they were able to join us here now. Good afternoon and we look forward to share the research made by our fellow Filipinos to you. Once again, welcome to this third webinar series brought to you by the Philippine Journal of Fisheries 
published by the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute under the Department of Agriculture. I am Cyrene Smonkawe, Managing Editor of TPJF, and I will be one of your moderators for today. To start this online gathering, let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. On behalf of the National Fisheries Research and Development Institute's Acting Executive Director, Dr. Lillian C. Garcia, CESO 5, here with us is Dr. Mujikiwi Santos, Scientist 2 of NFRDI, Academician of the National Academy of Science and Technology, or NAST, and Editor-in-Chief of TPJF, to welcome us in this online gathering and to deliver the rationale. Doc Muji. Hello, hello everyone. <laughs> Kamusta po kayo? Kamusta? Um, pwede bang kaway-kaway tayo dyan? Hello? <laughs> Ayan, dumadabi na po tayo dun sa pumapasok. Hello everyone. Ayan. No, oh, I see a lot of uh, young faces here. So very exciting for the students. Okay. Um, our uh, executive director, si Dr. Lillian Garcia po, ay... Uh, Nasa uh, another equally important meeting, nasa Bulacan po siya ngayon, uh, attending uh, an, an important uh, gathering there. So he, he, she asked me to deliver her work welcome message. No? So I, I will read it now. Um, okay ba yung boses ko, Sai? Hindi ba parang maliit? Okay lang. Yes, yes. Oh, okay malinaw lang. na malinaw. Malinaw, okay. <laughs> so... Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on one of NFRDI published papers. Uh, the first phase, Growth, Development, and Survival of Holoturia scabra sea cucumber larvae in different microalgal regimens and watering media. The study highlights the optimization of techniques and simplification of requirements of sea cucumber larval rearing. Then, a second paper will follow two, which highlights the performance of sea cucumber juveniles in terms of growth and survival when reared in nets and tanks. So allow me first to congratulate the authors, uh, Mam Nonita, hello Mam Nonits, and C. Sir Kristen, for their contribution to the development of sea cucumber industry in our country. Now, for the information of everyone, um, alam niyo po ba, sea cucumber has a high demand abroad. No? According to a report dated October 1, 2020 uh, from the Business Insider, a, a kilo can cost over 3,000 US dollars. So imagine niyo po yon. The report says further that they are so priced that people will risk their lives to get a hold of one. Okay? So ganun po siya ka-in demand no? at ka-importante sa, sa livelihood. Also, an FAO report in 2015 says that the Philippines ranked 8th in world sea cucumber production. 
But actually, in the, in the 80s, we used to be first in the world. Production declined due to unregulated harvesting, illegal fishing, and many other reasons. In Central Luzon, where I came from, sea cucumber abounds in the coastal waters of Bataan and Zambales. Years ago, we tried sea ranching and village level breeding of this commodity. Fisher folk gatherers sell dry, seas, dry sea cucumbers in Manila. What is my point? That there is so much potential for this commodity. And so, through this webinar, may it not only increase your awareness, but would also inspire you to help develop this industry through various means, such as research, extension, projects, regulations, and other activities. For NFRDI, we will continue to embark on science-based research activities that would help develop the sea cucumber industry that in the end would help alleviate the living conditions of our fisher folk. Masaganang ani, mataas nakita. Now, significant areas to focus on is on breeding, culture, and processing in order to address decreasing supply and to improve its quality and value. Moving forward, NFRDI's immediate next step is this. We will use the result of these experiments in order to produce more seeds for our stock enhancement program in the entire country. In this phase, it will be managed by LGUs or organizations. Looking forward, we envision increase in volume and size for better production, job generation, and income. Sabi nga natin, Masaganang ani, mataas na kita as our uh, banner slogan ng Department of Agriculture. Lastly, kindly continue supporting NFRDI on its programs and activities. Even, if, even in times of pandemic, NFRDI will not stop reaching and serving you in various ways. Pahabol lang, would you kindly like our share and share our FB page? So, ulitin ko lang po yun, no? Uh, kindly like and share our FB page. Share it to your FB friends, fisher folks, peers, loved ones, and others. So, in behalf of our secretary, uh, William Dar and the governing board through his chairman, Yusek Eduardo Ngona, thank you very much. And then special thanks to NFRDI's training group headed by yours truly, that's me, Dr. Muji. Sinabi ni Ma'am dito, our kuya and uh, Mr. Pogi. Oh, yan. Oh, hindi po ako nag-ano, nandun po. <laughs> stay, stay safe, everyone. Let's, let God's protection be with us. We thank Him for His grace, mercy, and protection, not only in this time of pandemic, but all the time. God bless us and shalom. Right. So that's the message of our um, uh, Executive Director, Dr. Lilian Garcia. Thank you very much, Ma'am, for that. Ingat po kayo dyan. And so that was really an inspiring message. Um, um, as, as she said, no, we will be here. NFRDI will be here for you guys no, to, to support uh, the fisheries industry and to, to support the sea cucumber industry in, the, in particular by way of our mandate through research development and uh, ed education services. Ayan po. Now this uh, PPJF webinar actually is, uh, is um, an idea of... Uh, Dr. Lillian Garcia, um, in so far as trying to mainstream the results of the, the Philippine Journal of Fisheries, meaning the publications in, in TPJF. Um, I hope you'll, you will be able to, if you have not, uh, if uh, you haven't uh, visited the, 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 the journal website, kindly visit it. Um, so marami pong publications doon. And this webinar is one way for us to um, really reach out to many people so that the results of the publications in TB TPJF eh makarating po sa mas maraming uh, Pilipino at mas uh, um, maibigay yung mga impormasyon at mga teknolohiya sa kanila para magamit po uh, dito sa atin. So uh, this will be a, a monthly activity uh, already uh, by NFRDI. Uh, first time we did the... Uh, publications on Taal, and then seafood safety, and now it's about sea cucumbers. So marami pa pong nakaplano uh, for, for all of us. 
uh, ng TPJF, continuous po ang publications natin. Um, and so, watch out for more information and what, watch out for more webinars. I'm very sure that uh, everyone will be uh, will enjoy uh, all the, the, the talks and the information that we will get from this webinar. So with that, uh, maraming maraming salamat po in behalf of uh, Dr. Lillian Garcia. Uh, back to you, Sai. Salamat po. Yes, thank you very much, Doc Moji. And thank you din po kay Ma'am Lillian for preparing that message. So now, let me introduce our two speakers. Our first speaker for today is Kristan Joy M. Campo. Kristan graduated BS Biology at the University of the Philippines, Tacloban in 2016. He is currently working at the NFRDI Marine Fisheries Research and Development Center or MFRDC in Giwan, Eastern Samar, as a research assistant of Ma'am Nonita Kabakaba. He worked on several projects, including research on sea cucumber seed production, spiny lobster stock assessment in Eastern Visayas, and currently on mangrove crab research assessment and aquaculture technology verification. He is also currently taking graduate studies in environmental science major in community-based resource management at UP Tacloban and is expected to graduate in 2021. Kristan received a gold award for the paper he co-authored together with Ma'am Nonitz, which was about seed production and grow-out culture of the sea cucumber Holoturia scabra in Eastern Samar, Philippines. So this award was under the category AFMA, Best R&D Paper for Fisheries Technology Adaptation or Verification during the 31st DA Bureau of Agricultural Research National Research Symposium held last October 2019 in Quezon City. He will tell us more about their full paper published in TPJF entitled Growth, Development, and Survival of Holoturia scabra Larvae in different microalgal regimens and water rearing media. Our second speaker is Ma'am Nanita S. Kabakaba. She is a senior aquaculturist and currently the officer in charge of the NFRDI MFRDC and the BIFAR Giwan Marine Fisheries Development Center in Giwan Eastern Samar since 2009. As head of the NFRDI MFRDC, she had conducted research on blue swimming crabs, sea cucumber, spiny lobster, and scallops, and garnered awards from different institutions on research papers submitted. So as I mentioned earlier, her paper co-authored with Kristan earned a gold award during the National Research Symposium of DA Bar last year. And as a station head of Bifar Giwan Marine Fisheries Development Center, she is responsible in the supervision and management on the production of hatchery bread commodities such as sea cucumber, abalone, blue swimming crab, giant clams, freshwater prawn, and milkfish. The seeds are distributed for aquaculture and stock enhancement in fish sanctuaries and marine protected areas. She firmly believes that by strict implementation of the regulations, coupled with intense educational campaign and strong political will of every LGU, sustainability of our fishery resources could be achieved. She will share with us the results of the research study entitled First Phase Juvenile Rearing of the Sea Cucumber Holoturia scabra in Eastern Samar, Philippines. I will now hand over to Kristan to start our first discussion. Hello, Kristan, are you there? Yes, I'm seeing a Kristan. Kristan? Mom, Nani? Yes. 
Check lang po natin parang may nasa Gagiwan Summer po kasi sila. Eh medyo oh, nag- uh, hindi mm-hmm. stable sa yung kanilang signal. So, uh, intay-intayin lang po natin ng konti. Nasa nasa center naman daw sila nasa sa town where malaki-laki ang signal. Just wait for them a little bit. So, karamihan na nandito, students, ano? Good to know. Tapos may nakita kong ilan na from uh, BFAR, regional offices. It's great. Uh, glad that you can join us. Send up yan sila. We did do a, a dry run yesterday. Okay naman. Wala namang bagyo sa, no, no, sa summer ano, ngayon. <laughs> o nga po, no. maulan ba? Ayan, nakapasok na po ate ayan si Kristan. Okay, sige. Yes. Ayan. 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 Hi, Kristan. Okay lang. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Kristan. Sige, go ahead, Kristan. Oh. Uh, hindi pa ako makapag-share ng screen. Ah, okay, sige. Disable ba? Ayan, okay na. Wait Share screen. Okay. Nakikita na ba? Yes. Yes. Put it on uh, power uh, PowerPoint mode or slide mode. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. So good afternoon, everyone. Pasensya, medyo na delay tayo. So I'm going to talk about the CQ Cumber project of NFRDI in G1 Eastern Summer. So I, Christian, will talk about more on the larval production while Miss Nonita Kabakaba, the center chief of NFRDI and MFRDC, will be talking about more on the nursery rearing of Culothorius cabra. So there are more than 1,000 species of sea cucumber known to exist. However, only 25 of them are being exploited commercially for the best mirror or the trebang industry worldwide. And one of the most highly priced of them is the Holothorius cabra. Holothorius cabra is commonly known as sandfish under the phylum Echinodermata, class Holothoroidea, family Holothoridae, and they have elongated, stout, cylindrical body whose color ranges from gray to black. The males are not distinguishable from females unless they have spun. They feed on organic detritus, which is mainly composed of mother sand, bacteria, and benthic algae. Therefore, low-cost statutory feeding regimen can be developed. They are widely distributed in the east of Africa, Indo-Pacific, and the eastern Pacific regions, and has an increasing demand in Asian markets because of their culinary pharmaceutical and nutraceutical uses. However, overfishing and overexploitation of the natural stocks have become a problem of the fishery. And in the Philippines, in the early 90s, we are actually one of the top three uh, exporters of besh demir or the dried sea cucumbers. But now, uh, currently, we're on, we're on the top eight na lang. So seed production has become the solution to restore the decreasing natural population of Sea cucumbers. So what is seed production? Uh, it is the culture of sea cucumbers from fertilized eggs up to the juvenile stage weighing two to four grams, which are now ready for grow out or farming. This uh, encompasses, of course, the hatchery part, uh, which, it, which involves uh, rearing of larvae until they grow into early juveniles. And the second part is the nursery rearing or the juvenile phase. So here, are, here is a diagram on the sea cucumber seed production scheme. Basically, it starts with the spawning, where, where it usually just takes a one day long to you know, um, allow the sea cucumber broodstocks to spawn. And after that, the fertilized eggs will be reared in tanks for one month, and the juvenile rearing follows which usually takes 
uh, two to four months. So usually in larval production, NASA tanks siya, tapos yung juvenile production could be in tank-based systems and could also be in outdoor systems. And after that, pwede mo na siyang i-grow out, pwede sa tanks, pens, and sa ponds. Uh, in 2011, the seed production of Holothuria scabra started at B4GMFDC Q1 using the methods of CIFDEC, Agudo, and the UPMSI. Stocking density and microalgal feed are vital factors to growth and survival according to DUI 2010. And many hatcheries utilize several or a com complex amount of or complex or variety of Microalgal species in feeding the larvae. This includes Ketoserus mulleri, Ketoserus calcitrans, Isoprosus galbana, Rhodomonas salina, and Tetrasome species. So, what are the gaps that we would like to address in seed production, particularly in larval production for sea cucumbers? First, is that we there is complexity in microalgal regimen for larval production, as what I've mentioned, maraming variety of microalgae. Uh, na gamit for larval production. And hence, the, meron siyang kaibat na high cost and labor for algal culture. Also, various water treatments are used in different hatcheries. And the cost of UV treatment system and chlorination method uh, augments hatchery costs. That's why this study, uh, gusto namin simplify and to lessen the cost and labor for seed production of larvae. So here is a graph on the seed production data of b 4 from 2013 to 2016. Uh, yung pinakamatas na survival from fertilized egg to juveniles is 2.4% lang. So yung goal namin is to improve and optimize the method so that we can increase the number of uh, produced seeds for restocking and for the restocking programs of BFAR and also for the beneficiaries of BFAR. Different facets in hatchery and nursery production have to be studied in the locality of Eastern Samar and published technology has also uh, need to be verified. Now I'm going to talk about more on the larval production. Uh, hence the study growth, development, and survival of Holothuria scabra larvae in different microalgal regimens and water rearing media. This is authored by yours truly. Uh, Ms. Nonita Escabacaba and Mr. De David N. Cosmiana of BFAR. Uh, actually, this study was conducted in, uh, in 2016 to 2017 and was published in July to December 2019 issue of the Philippine Journal uh, of Fisheries. So the objective of this study is to simplify the larval production of Holothuria scabra by determining optimum microalgal regimen and water rearing media. More specifically, this study would like to determine the growth, development, and survival of H. scabra larvae fed with different microalgal diets, including the Ketoserus gracilis, Ketoserus calcitrans, and the combined feed of those two species. Second is to determine uh, growth, development, and survival in different microalgal diet concentrations and in different water treatments, including sand-filtered seawater, chlorinated seawater, and UV-treated seawater. For the materials and methods, uh, this study was conducted at the Sea Cucumber Hatchery of B4G MFDC in Eastern Summer, as shown in the map. So I've shown this before. In, uh, general scheme of the cucumber production. So we have utilized dry treatment and food shock technique, uh, which is based on the methods of Huinuminius of UPMSI, but we opt to omit the thermal shock because we were, uh, were able to successfully spawn the brood stocks with just using these two treatments. And larval rearing, we used 500 individual per liter stocking density for the larvae. Of course, aeration, sand filtered seawater, and ketoser species microalgal feed were provided. For the first experiment on single and combined microalgal diets, uh, we used the single microalgal species 
uh, C. gracilis and C. calcitrans and the combined uh, microalgal feed. So the experimental variables here are the single species feed, while the combined microalgal feed is actually uh, based on the CFDEC protocol. For the second experiment, uh, we, we maintained the larvae in 10,000 cells per ml, 30,000, and 50,000 cells per ml microalgae concentration of the combined CGR and CC feed. So of course, we monitored and estimated these concentrations daily to ensure that these concentrations are, are being maintained all throughout the larval production. And lastly, the, uh, the experiment on different types of rearing water sand filtration system is the default uh, system for filtration in the hatchery of Bport and Matlisi. While we experimented on the chlorinated seawater and rehabilitated seawater also. Since these two uh, treatments, the chlorinated and UV treated seawater, are advised by Agudo and CFDEC. Of course, after the rearing, we, uh, we assess the growth, development, and survival. Using these formulas for the growth, uh, we determine the pre-metamorphosis and the post-metamorphosis uh, growth parameters. For the development, we determine the percent composition of each larval stages, including auricularia, dolularia, tentacula, early juveniles, and we also determine the percent composition of the deformed larvae. And of course, the survival rate was determined at the end of the rearing. We also did some data and statistical analysis to determine significant difference of our results. And now for the results on microalgal diets, we have uh, found out that there was no significant difference uh, among different treatments in microalgal diets. So similar lang yung results ng single microalgal species feed and the yung combined microalgal species feed. So this is uh, shown further in our results for the different uh, growth parameters. Although my kita na higher uh, per growth performance yung combined, but it was not significantly different with the other treatments. So here's a, a uh, photos of photomicrographs of the larvae. So you, we have the early auricularia, of course, mid late auricularia, and yung dolularia, which is a non feeding stage. Kaya kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, balik tayo di, uh, sa part na to na may uh, label na letter D, that's the time na nagmetamorphose na yung auricularia larvae to dolular, dor, dolularia larvae. So medyo nag-shrink na yung larvae sa part na stage na yan. And then it continuously uh, will grow into pentactula and early juvenile after one month of rearing. So we have found out that in treatments, C. calcitrans and the combined species, C. gracilis and C. calcitrans, as early as day 30, we were able to produce early juveniles. Unlike in C. gracilis, on day 35, pa nagkaroon ng early juvenile. In terms of survival, we had a very low survivorship in 2016, because less than 1% in survivorship. But this improved in 2016 and 2017 where CGR and CC combined microalgal species feed uh, yielded highest survivorship. So according to Ashen Muthaya, Ketoser species were reported to have yielded better results on the growth and survival of larvae compared to these other uh, three species. That's why Ketoser species were actually used here in the study. And combined species feed was reported to uh, give and to yield better growth performance of the larvae based on the study of Ashan Muthaya. And now for the results on microalgal diet concentrations, uh, it was very notable that the larvae or the early juveniles produced uh, from the set of 50,000 cells per ml were, uh, no, had the best growth performance. 
as you can see from the graph. While those that were fed with 10,000 cells per ml concentration of microalgae were very stunted. And the results were significantly different. So this is uh, more substantiated by, uh, by determining the different, uh, the total length gain and average daily growth rate parameters, where 50,000 cells per ml concentration really yielded the best result. In terms of development, as early as day 25, hindi pa nag isang buwan, nakaproduce na kami ng early juveniles compared to the lower density of microalgae. In terms naman of survival, although as you can see, there's a lesser or lower uh, survivorship in 50,000 cells per ml, these results were actually not significantly different. Uh, according to the hatchery manuals of Agudo and Rashdi, uh, the larvae should be maintained at 20,000 to 40,000 cells per ml of microalgal concentration. So we speculate from our results that the survivorship could have been affected by the accumulation of ammonia, since there's a higher density of microalgae in the setup. However, there was no uh, 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 data for it. It's just uh, speculation, but it's very possible. And lastly, for the results on water treatments, uh, sand filtered seawater yielded the highest uh, growth performance, followed by UV treated seawater and chlorinated seawater. So this is more substantiated by our results in total length gain and the average daily growth rate, where sand filtered seawater yielded uh, best results compared to the other two uh, treatments. In terms of development, similar results were reported, were yielded from sand filtered seawater and UV treated seawater, where we were, were able to produce or to harvest early juvenile uh, Holothuria scabra as early as day 25. In terms of survival, we had uh, we had best results in January 2017 and April 2017. So consistently, it was sand filtered seawater yielded the highest uh, survivorship of Volotoria scabra larvae. So to sum it all up, uh, for the results in single and combined microalgal feed. Uh, there was no significant difference in uh, between single and combined microalgal feed. Thus, the feed can be simplified in the hatchery by just using a uh, single microalgal species feed if other species of microalgae are not available now, so that we can lessen the expenses and the effort for microalgal culture. In terms of microalgal concentrations, Larvae are best maintained at 50,000 cells per ml microalgal concentration to promote uh, growth and development. However, we advise to increase the water change rate so that we can lessen uh, accumulation of ammonia or possible uh, intoxication of the larvae. And lastly, for the water treatments, we have found out best and impressive results for growth, development, and survival of larvae in setup with sand filtered seawater than in other uh, than other water treatments. Although we although we do not um, what what do you call that discredit the other two treatments because they are actually established uh, water and uh, water treatments for Velothoria scabra reading water. But our study have found out that sand using sand filtered seawater is already sufficient for rearing uh, Holothuria scabra larvae. And all these we have conducted because we want to simplify the larva production requirements of Holothuria scabra larval product uh, scabra larval production in BFR GMFDC Eastern Summer.
So I've discussed already about the spawning and the larval rearing, and now we're going to talk about more on the juvenile rearing. So after the larva production, magreach na yung larvae into early early juvenile stage. I, it transfer na siya to the first phase juvenile rearing, which will be discussed by my uh, by our center chief in given Eastern summer, uh, Miss Nonita Escabacaba. Ma'am? Good afternoon. This is Nonita Escabacaba. I'm going to discuss on the juvenile rearing experiment conducted in D1 Eastern summer. Uh, we conducted this experiment because we know that there are gaps in the juvenile production in Eastern summer. And one of it, uh, those is the weather and seascape variability that may affect uh, nursery and farming. Second is that sea cucumber genetic stocks in Eastern summer differs from those other parts in the Philippines. That's according to the study conducted by Gutampo and Kim in 2017. And the third is that local climate we affect how and where nursery rearing should be conducted, especially that Eastern summer experiences type two climate, which is longer period of season. Thus, uh, this paper on the first phase, uh, juvenile rearing of the sea cucumber holotorius cabra in Eastern summer Philippines. And this is authored by yours truly and Kristen Joy in Campo. Uh, this was, uh, published in the Philippine Journal of Fisheries in July to December 2009 paper, uh, uh, edition. So the objective of the study is to determine the growth and survival of juveniles in different location and seasonality of rearing, different juvenile rearing media and different stocking densities. For the materials and methods, of course, the juveniles which were used for this experiment comes from the hatchery wherein the uh, spawning and larval uh, rearing uh, protocol were discussed, was discussed by Tristan on the first uh, report. So for the rearing site, we did the experiment in Salcedo, uh, specifically in Barangay Maliwaliu, and the second site, which is in Giwan uh, nearby, water in in the GMFDC, which is called the Tubabao Channel. And they were conducted in 2018, in, in, July, in April to May, July to August, and September to October. The second uh, experiment was on the stocking densities, uh, wherein we used a half a net cage and they were installed in the nearby uh, water at the uh, GMFDC. And we used the stocking density of 300 individual per square meter, 500 individual per square meter, and 1,000 individual per square meter. Uh, another experiment, we did the uh, uh, rearing tanks, culture of the juvenile uh, sea cucumber in rearing tanks and hapanic cage. For the indoor rearing tanks, we use uh, the wooden tank with size of one meter by one meter by 0.3. And we feed, we, uh, we use the, uh, the plastic slate with spirulina uh, and coat it, coat it with spirulina and uh, feed them with the uh, sea, seaweed crude extract of sargassum and the orange. This medium was also used by UPMSI and CIFTEC and even uh, before on the first and uh, 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 the first uh, conduct of uh, uh, hatchery in D1. And uh, another is medium is the use of fine mist half a net, net cage with a size of one meter by one meter by 1.5 and they were these were installed outdoors. They feed the of the juveniles are the organic detritus which is found surrounding the hapanets. And this is uh, being used by CIFDEC and UPMSI and currently uh, before GMFDC is cucumber hatching. Uh, we assess the growth and survival 
of the sea cucumber juvenile in terms of the total weight gain, specific growth rate, and the survival rate. And the, and the data were subjected to descriptive and inferential statistics. Now for the results, in terms of the, in the nursery in Guan and Salcedo, uh, it will be noted that, that in terms of specific uh, of growth rates, total weight gain and specific growth rates, those cultured in Guan were higher uh, than those in Maliwala and Salcedo, but in terms of survival rate, there was no significant difference between the two sites. For the effect on seasonality of the nursery, uh, it will be noted that uh, there was no significant difference in terms of growth rates and survival of the juveniles reared in different period from April, May, July to August, and September to October. In terms of uh, location and seasonality interaction, uh, it was also noted that uh, there was no effect on the growth performance of uh, unsurvival of juveniles uh, between locations and seasonality. So for the different stocking densities, uh, for the total weight and specific growth rate and survival rate, was noted, uh, of course, that um, higher survival, higher specific growth rate was found for the sea cucumber juveniles reared at lower stocking density compared to uh, the higher stocking densities. For the uh, experiment on the growth and survival using half and cages and tanks, uh, uh, it was observed that uh, in terms of growth rates, uh, there was a higher total weight than a specific growth rate for those uh, sea cucumber juveniles reared in floating net cage compared to those reared in tanks. But in terms of survival, there was no significant difference between the rearing media. So in conclusion, on location and seasonality, the rearing locations is with better organic detritus accumulation results to better growth, better growth. Happened cages can be damaged by intense wave action during the wet season. On, in terms of stocking density, 300 individual per square meter year yielded optimum result. Overcrowding costs uh, poor growth and low survival rates. Growth and survival of juveniles is density dependent. In terms of hapa nets versus the indoor tanks, growth was bet better in floating hapa nets, and the expected body size in attaining uh, is attained after rearing in the outdoor cages compared to those reared in the indoor indoor rearing tank tanks. So for our ways forward. The seed produced from the hatchery, which, uh, which, by which the, the, the results coming from, from the experiments, we were, ab uh, were already able to, to, to support the livelihood programs by, uh, by the clientele of the FARG and FDC. And the project of the ACR uh, on the on, on sea cucumber we, the, the hatchery is also the ones uh, supplying the seeds through the given development foundation. Uh, these are also some pictures on the uh, beneficiaries of uh, the Asia JDFI for the project on sea cucumber. So thank you so much and good afternoon. Clap, 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 clap. Thank, clap, you, clap, so clap. Thank you so much. Thank you for Kristan and Mam Noni. So now po, we are now open for questions and open forum. Si Doc Muji po ang magmamoderate ng session na ito. Hello, hello everyone. Again, uh, thank you very much Ate Nonets. Thank you very much Kristan for, for those uh, wonderful contributions to the sea cucumber uh, research and the sea cucumber industry. 
um, very exciting results. And I'm sure uh, natuwa din yung ating mga um, nanonood at mga nakikinig. Okay. Sige. So, start na natin. Ready na kayo, Ma'am Nonets? Ma'am uh, uh, Sir Kristan, ready na? Para sa discussion. Okay. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here already. Pero we encourage everyone pa to, to post your questions. Um, whether dito sa Zoom or nandun sa nakikinig sa FB Live, pwede po namin ipasa yung inyong mga questions from FB Live papunta dito sa ating uh, Zoom. Okay? Um, pero unahin ko na muna siguro yung, yung question ko. Okay lang ba? So kay, kay Kristan, uh, I mean very glaring yung, yung significance ng sand filtered. No? Um, any ideas kung bakit uh, uh, ganun ka, ka in a way ka, kaganda compared dun sa ibang uh, uh, filters yung sand filtered uh, results and do you have any plans on following it up meaning trying to understand better what's happening with the sand filtered uh, system actually you know, yung speculation namin was that Yung sa chlorinate, we had trials on chlorinated seawater. No? Tapos may mga, ano, mga mali na hindi na neutralize yung chlorine. So we have to redo the experiment. Kasi yung, yung chlorinated seawater, you have to add uh, sodium thiosulfate para malasan yung effect ng chlorine sa larvae. That's why in the first trials, we had a very, very low survivorship sa, chlor sa chlorinated seawater. While in UV treated seawater naman, we speculate na parang masyadong nagiging malinis yung ano yung water for the larvae parang we we i've read about uh, literature sa UV treatment okay naman siya for larval production kasi na minimize yung bacterial infection ganun pero par siguro may effect yung UV treatment sa nutrient content ng water na pwede siyang mag ano maapektuhan because of UV Right. Ano nga, uh, while in sa sand filtration system naman, yung fini-filter lang naman doon yung mga malalaking uh, particles. Okay. Except sa ano, yung mga silt. I mean, yung nafi-filter yung mga silt. And, ano. Although, we really have to study further about those kasi hindi siya masyadong clear pa nga. Yung reason why sand filtered seawater uh, consistently ano, yielded high higher survival in all of our experiments. And actually, currently, in the hatchery of B4GMFTC, successful naman yung, ano, yung results nila mm -hmm. sa production. Use, just using the, ano, the sand filter and seawater. Okay. Uh, and I guess, uh, para dun sa mga nakikinig sa atin, nagpa-plano ng uh, thesis nila for master's or PhD, I, I think that's a, that's a very good uh, area that you can check uh, in terms of uh, yung, uh, uh, perhaps yung biochemical uh, ingredients to own or we whether it's uh, organismic, meaning yung mga na, na kumaga, eh, na filter out na, na, na at hindi na filter eh, kailangan pala ng, ano, no? ng, ng sea cucumber. Whereas kung UV, for example, eh, pati yun natatamaan. So therefore, hindi nakakuha ng nutrients, something like that. And uh, do I understand it, Kristan uh, and Ma'am Nonets, na kumbaga ito yung isa sa mga magandang contribution dahil nagiging mas, um, mas ano to, kumbaga, um, mas uh, cost-effective in a way in terms of that process of filtering, di ba? And it will really help the, the, the process of, of you know, uh, rearing uh, mga, mga sea cucumbers. Tama ba? Yes, Doc. Kasi nga, yung yung chlorination tapos yung UV treatment is well, parang course. augmentation lang yun sa, right, sa right. default na water resource. An additional hatchery. cost, kumbaga, di ba? Uh, parang ganun. Okay. Although, what, what, what's being practiced now, sabi nyo nga, is uh, yun nga, UV tsaka ano, chlorinated, more or less? Uh, what's being practiced sa hatchery is yung sand filtered seawater uh, na dito okay. sa amin, sa hatchery. Oh, Pero no, pa, yung sa mga sa industry. protocols, sa, oh. sa industry, they advise using UV treated seawater. Ah, okay. okay. Good, 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 good. So now, yun yung ating isa sa mga pwedeng uh, recommendations, okay, in terms of the technique. Okay, 
Sige, from Joel uh, B. Balista from Facebook Live. Um, I guess kay Ate Nonets. So, do we have a published paper on national assessment of sea cucumber? What particular area in Region 5 included as sampling site? Uh, did you hear that one? Um, uh, I think the, uh, I don't know if it was published, but mm -hmm. when Leia and Dubai, I think mm -hmm. we had that but I don't know if he published that. Pero it was uh, uh, recently wala. Uh, wala tayo sa I, I don't know lang with uh, Mom Annette and their group mm -hmm. if they have, because the the, pay, uh, the the project now for Asia is mostly on uh, DNA on live, right. uh, livelihood. Right. Right. But for stock assessment I don't know if we have current publications for that. Okay. Um, so that, that's another area that uh, you guys, maybe Joel, can look at and maybe start writing ano, to a review paper on this one. Kung wala pa. Uh, yung sa Region 5 daw, te, na sampling site. Uh, ibig sabihin siguro, parang kung meron nga ba assessment, nababanggit ba ang Region 5 or do you know any information about Region 5 in terms of sea cucumbers? Mm, wala no, pa sir. No, 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 kasi hindi rin kasi siya nasasama sa ating NSAP so we don't have Right, the, right. Uh, okay. So uh, it's it's an time that we uh, no. Yeah, it's <laughs> an open oh, it's, a, it's an open area where uh, a lot of information is needed. I think yun ang sinasabi ni Ate Nonets. And we need the uh, help, no? We need more help from you guys to to go into this one, no? Uh, piliin nyo to as a field of your your paper or your expertise and and uh, pwede kayo maka-contribute sa information. Okay. From Glai, galing kay Glai uh, de Peralta from uh, Cagayan State U. Question, what was the frequency of water change and the percentage of change in water? Uh, also, what was the condition during 2017 where there was an increase in settlement of sandfish larvae? Did you get that? Sa larvae production. Um, I, 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 I think so. Yeah. yeah. Larvae or larvae. Uh, yeah. So, yung rate ng ano is 60% ng change. So, okay. Kailangan i drain yung water, uh, yung water sa tank uh, at the rate of 50%. Tapos papalitan siya ng, ano, ng bawang tubig every other day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, uh, uh, parang ganun yung input. Yeah, ay yung pinatanong niya yung tungkol doon sa 2017. Ano ba yung condition noon sa 2017 kung bakit nagkaroon ng increase in settlement ng sandfish larvae? I would think binasa niya sa uh, paper. Sa nung ano kasi, nung 2016 and ng mga previous experiments, uh, parang nangangapa pa yung hatchery. So we we were applying the protocol, pero there are some parts na nagano kami, mm -hmm. nagkakamali. So yung nasa publication na, yun na talaga yung parang so far best results namin. Although yun lang yung na-include sa project na yun. Kasi nga, yung, as what I've mentioned, yung ano, yung seed production started in 2011. So yung mga time na yun, we were just ano, exploring pa. Until 2015 and beyond, we were able to successfully spawn and produce larvae. Okay. And of course, important din pala, I hindi ko na mention, pero important yung uh, water quality. Na, ano. Pero parang default na kinuha namin yung ano, yung water physical chemical parameters lang. And makikita niyo, ah, makikita din sa paper na rin, sa published paper yung ano, yung optimum ano, uh, water quality for larval production. Okay. Uh, from Lord uh, Matino Mondigo, uh, sabi niya, uh, does algal biofilm in the hapa net cages affected or contributed in the growth performance of cucumbers. I, I understand wala, wala naman po tayong present na data dito no? uh, correlating this one. But I guess siguro nagtatanong siya, what do you think? Uh, speculation on this one, algal biofilm. Una, may nakita ba kayo and you think uh, na, uh, affected? 
<laughs> yes, uh, definitely affected yung, yung growth ng biofilm sa hapan. It's, that's why those experiments, mas mataas yung, survive, yung growth uh, ng juveniles dun sa mga hapan. It's, uh, may uh, in connection din dun sa 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 question na to may tanong din si Ma'am Glay uh, Peralta uh, were together also sa Asia project um siguro yung kung bakit mas mataas yung survival and growth rates dito sa Giwan compared dun sa Maliwaliw kasi mas murky yung yung waters dito sa Giwan uh, therefore mas marami yata yung detritus na na ano sa doon sa hapan it's compared doon sa maliwali kasi ang maliwali is open open siya so maybe yung i don't know maybe yung yung biofilm na nakaattach sa hapan it was uh, hindi masyadong diverse or ano although hindi namin uh, ano hindi namin na, na measure or tiningnan kung, na, kung ano yung mga Algae or mga detritus na na ano na na ba right. ano sa right. pero very evident in no. terms of pag nagmonitor kami sa ano sa yeah. Yes, Kai. Yes, Doc. Ayan. So, si uh, Ma'am Yi Kong Chang po, I think she's from Malaysia and she messaged me po. So, nandito din siya sa Zoom. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, enjoying sorry. the discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. I, 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 I took note of that. Even si Sir Malik Ali. We're going to speak in English yeah, yeah. from here on. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, and that's a good, that's, that's a good, well, that's good. Uh, we have yes. uh, some uh, uh, foreign uh, participants here who are listening to the discussion. So, we'll try as, as much as possible to talk in English so they'll, they'll be able to follow. Is that okay? Okay. So... Okay, so is that okay, Ma'am Nonitz? Tristan? Yes. Oh, well, we'll try to. to yes, please. Uh, best effort. <laughs> best effort. <laughs> tayo sa, sa English. Sorry, sorry to, to our foreign participants. No, yes. I, I did not realize that we, we, we had some until I saw one uh, upcoming question from uh, Mr. Malik Ali. Anyway, from Jasper Kit Tangal Is it feasible to raise uh, age cabra in recirculated aquaculture system? And how many months would it take to to harvest? Uh, I guess you already mentioned some of this, uh, but can you maybe elaborate uh, with uh, uh, this question? I mean, answer this question. Uh, so both Cuba uh, and uh, well, uh, okay. I I would think how many months would it take to harvest? So I think uh, Jasper is thinking about okay. uh, the the full cycle. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So from larval production, it would take uh, only one month. Okay. After that, another two to four months of juvenile production in nursery. But uh, it, uh, 45 days is already enough for the first phase juvenile production. So after 45 days of rearing, you can already proceed to grow culture in ranch or in sea pens. Okay, and and that would take uh, how many months for you to be able to sell it in the market? Uh, it would be at least eight months, uh, based on the study of and the experiences of the uh, Gwen Development Foundation I incorporated. They were able to harvest a uh, marketable size uh, sea cucumber uh, weighing three hundred twenty grams as early as as eight as eight months. But it would take usually one year and a half to two years to okay. have the premium size for export. Uh, okay. okay. So uh, eight months plus around one, one, one and a half months for the larvae and juvenile. So it's about uh, ten, 10, 10 months you'll have, a, you, you can harvest uh, parang ganon from, from. Yeah. But it's larvae. actually a profitable activity since uh, okay. premium size scabra uh, actually has a very, uh, yeah, very uh, high expensive price, price in yeah. the market. That the beche de mer, right? You just have to wait for them to grow right. in the ranch. Okay. You just have to monitor uh, at least once a week, you know. Okay. 
So this one from FB Live from Mr. Malik Ali. He's from Pakistan. What is the growth rate of sea cucumber in one month? So I, I guess uh, you can you can um, mention like uh, growth rate in uh, larvae, growth rate in uh, juvenile, and maybe gr growth rate in the grow out uh, on something. Okay. So we reported uh, growth rates in terms of uh, specific growth rate of larvae with. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. With, with uh, 600, uh, 500 to 800 uh, micrometers in terms of length, no, so larvae. And for the juvenile production, uh, the rate was about. More or less is fine. Yeah, to, yung more or less we have from three, gra three grams per day up to 12 grams per day, uh, 12 grams, milligrams per day. Milligrams for per the day, first bro. week next week. Okay. So after after forty five days of rearing for the first phase nursery, uh, we're able to harvest uh, two grammar uh, juveniles. Two, two right. grammar juveniles. That's after like yeah. forty five days, right? Yes. From the rearing. Okay. Okay. Very good. So uh, this is from Wei Wei Chiang. I guess she she's the one from Malaysia. Hi. What is the size of juveniles putting into the nursery tank and hapa? Oh, uh, by the way, by the way, we, we forgot to answer that. Can, can we rear in aquaculture system, recirculated aquaculture system from Jasper Canina? Uh, can uh, we yes, rear? Of course. We can, we can. Or the, 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 yes, we can. Y yes, we can. But then it, it, your, the, the recommendation, it's, just... it's better if we do it uh, at least for the grow out to the outside, outdoors. outdoors right? Yes, yes. Okay. It's a more natural and uh, mas Prime mabilis them, uh, uh, better better growth, you know, better survival if it's outdoors. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, we go back to uh, Miss Chiang. Uh, the size of juveniles putting into the nursery tank and hapa. So I think he's she's asking whether uh, what size do we put uh, when we start doing uh, the mm -hmm. the juvenile rearing and maybe the the grow out rearing, for example. What are yes. the sizes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So after larval production, we're able to produce early juveniles uh, mm -hmm. with size greater than one millimeter. So it's a very, very small size. Mm -hmm. uh, one millimeter. So after that, uh, the juveniles can now be transferred to happiness. happiness. And of course, you have to use uh, fine mesh happiness. To, of course, okay. avoid and then or escape uh, that stays in HAPA for again, how many? I mean, for at least 45, 45 days. days. And after 45 days, more or less, and what, what's the size of the, the that? Uh, it's about number? two grammar. Two grammar. How, how, how long is that one? So from one millimeter to. With an average of one inch. One inch. Okay. Because from one millimeter uh, to one inch. Uh, very, uh, the problem with the sea cucumbers is that their growth is very, very heterogeneous, depending on. The quality of uh, substrate, right, the right. quality of food, and the right. and of course the supply. The so, richer but, the supply, uh, the better the growth performance. Right, but the average, just just the average is average, one inch, one inch. And it's about uh yes yes no. One inch. So from one millimeter, when you start putting it in hapa, after forty five days, it will go on an average of around one inch. Yes. Okay, after yes, 45 no. days. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, hello, I'm Alfred Rabaka from MSU Naawan. My question is on sand filtered seawater. Was there any contaminants observed in the larval tanks, such as copy pods, etc., and compared to other water treatments used? I guess she, he's, again, uh, we did not yet measure or specifically study this one. I guess mm -hmm. she, he's, he's asking whether you've observed something like this. Uh, yes, in larval production as well as in nursery tanks, uh, there were very small copy buds uh, that, that infested the setup, but these were um, mitigated or um, these were avoided by improving our sand filtration system to minimize the 
infestation of coffee buds in the water supply. But in the sense, uh, of course, in the chlorinated and seawater, sea water, there were uh, no coffee buds observed, just in the sand filtered sea water. Okay. Okay, next question. Uh, Ate Nonets, ito, baka pwede mo ring sagutin kasi in a way, uh, you, you're also a, a PFAR personnel. Uh, sabi ni Sir Ferds, si Sir Ferdy Lim, uh, paki-elaborate ng legal issues, constraint sa pagkuha sa wild ng aged cabra para alagaan kesa pagbili sa hatchery na di nga naman available basta-basta at di pa commercialized. So I guess uh, um, maybe he's asking whether uh, ano ba yung uh, regulatory framework for example sa sa H scabra sa pagkuha sa sa wild para alagaan. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, uh, yes. Oh uh, uh, I I I'm not the uh, hindi ko lang I I I do not have the data what. Pow, but I think we have that pow on the size of uh, scabra that is uh, supposed to be harvested from the wild because uh, according to the meetings with the HR and Dr. Minyes, uh, the, the, the most or the best uh, harvestable stocks uh, or size should be more than 300 because if we, if we harvest less less than 320 grams, you will not be able to get the premium uh, size uh, in the market. And uh, uh, I guess uh, there is, uh, may maybe in the area there is no uh, hatchery, but I am sure we have uh, the hatcheries are, the hatcheries for City Cucumber are available here in Region 8. And I think in Sambales we have in, uh, I don't know, in the Kubupan, if they already have the cucumber hatchery, and in Bulinao, Pangasinan, uh, they have that. You know, it's just that, uh, same with other species, uh, uh, we, we are prohibited in harvesting these uh, stocks as uh, they are already vulnerable. Okay, so we're saying there's there's uh, there's some uh, regulations already. Um, yes, but, yes, but, uh, 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 I cannot just recall the POW on the regulation on the uh, gathering and collecting of uh, secure commerce. Okay, sige. Although I guess uh, I I think medyo uh, ilang taon na yun ano and. Uh, and dito mamaya may question kung ano daw yung mga pwedeng research project ng undergrad students from Teris uh, Manoharan. No? Uh, and I have said, I've said uh, as we have said, that sand filtered thing would be a, a good research project to, to check further what, what's happening with that one para mas maintindihan pa natin yung ganong klaseng effect no? na magandang effect no? dun sa hatchery. And then also this one, that, that uh, legal or social economic uh, or impact assessment, for example, nung, nung, nung existing regulations uh, on the Scabra, uh, many years after the, the FAO is passed. So I think that's also one good uh, project or research uh, thesis for students to, to check, no? to, I mean, to, to do. And uh, help out in informing us, uh, informing the public on what's happening so far. Okay, from Joel Balasta again, may we need to do further study on the properties of sand filtered water? Uh, yeah, sabi nga natin, this is a very interesting um, um, uh, next uh, thesis or next question to answer. Okay. And then um, from Jasper Olet, where are the common diseases of sea cucumber? Any treatment uh, or prevention? So it's diseases naman. Can you maybe uh, say for, some diseases? Yes, though. Uh, for the larval production, usually uh, yung rotting edges symptom or disease for larvae, where the larvae experiences um, 
uh, infections on their edges uh, due to bacterial infection, of course. And there is a very big uh, area on the disease on the natural uh, disintegration of larvae where we have observed uh, deformed larvae because also of viral and bacterial infection. But those were uh, based on our literature survey and readings, but were not actually measured in the study and further investigated. So the disease part and infection of Lotharia scabra larvae has to be really studied further. For the juveniles, uh, the main uh, disease, or uh, not really disease, but predators and mm -hmm. parasites, which includes coffee pods mm -hmm. and, of course, bacterial infection, okay. which actually uh, causes uh, mortality in the juveniles, especially those that are uh, grown outdoors in happenet cages. Okay, so there are uh, existing information about. Uh... Uh, yes, yes. diseases and like you know bacteria and copepods but i would assume uh, many of these are not not really well known you know so and again these are very good you know uh, theses or or projects that you can do for for your for your studies no to go into bacterial diseases of sea cucumbers and uh, the the copepods uh, um in in uh, sea cucumbers so ayan ang dami na natin pong ano magandang mga research question na pwedeng pwede nating sagutin okay and then uh, treatment and prevention siguro ano ba ngayon mga existing ano bang ginagawa niyo diyan sa uh, what, what do you do in G1 in terms of uh, trying to treat these uh, diseases usually uh, what we do here is just to improve lang yung water quality so far and also yeah. uh, yes and if there are uh, in times na in times that uh, the water is uh, being infected by microorganisms or bacteria, we tend to use the UV treated seawater, especially that in the weakness of sand filter, uh, sand filtered seawater, uh, it's easier to be contaminated by microorganisms, by bacteria. Okay. Actually, that's the next question from our friend from uh, Sabah, Malaysia, Noor uh, Adzlina Abidin. Um, two questions. Have you experienced the infestation of copepods pods in larval rearing tank using sand-filtered seawater? And second question, may no. I know the mesh size of the materials used as the floating hapa? The mesh size was... Uh, one millimeter uh, diameter mesh happen at cages. Okay. So and me, then, uh, can you repeat the first question? The first question is, uh, have you experienced the infestation of copepods in larval rearing tank using sand filtered uh, yeah, seawater? Yeah. Yes, Bob. Yes, no. Yes, there were, uh, you've, you've observed some copepods there, right? Yes. But uh, we did not yet study the extent or what kind of copy pods, etc. is doing that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so for Mam Nitz uh, from Glai Ulet, what do you think was the reason for the difference in growth in the two sites and between Hapa Cage and the tanks? Continuous po ba yung water change sa tanks? So. Yeah, okay. I think I already uh, have answered that kanina. Uh, uh, that uh, it is evident that, that for those grown in Hapanets, they're very, the, the, the growth rates are higher because of the uh, biofilm or more biofilm that attaches to the Hapanets. While in the tanks, uh, we use the floating system. So maybe the food or the food ingested by the, 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 the juveniles are lesser compared when they are um, uh, reared in cages. Okay, and then again, um, these are things that we need to study further. Tama po ba, Ma'am Nets, no? Uh, we see some differences, but then the question next would be, so what's happening there? And, and you guys can help out in terms of, you know, again, making this as your research projects in, in those specific mm -hmm. questions. Um, yung biofilm, for example, uh, what, what's the composition of that biofilm? 
I would be interested to know. Um, okay, so the assessment, I said, uh, maybe as a CHED project, although you know, I hope um, um, later on we'll, you know, the NONETs will be able to get whether there's a, this CHED project on assessment. Uh, from uh, Joel Balasta again, uh, yes, uh, the Region 5 also is a source of sea cucumber. Maybe we can collaborate for this in the future. This information is very much needed for conservation. Since we do not have a baseline data, the extent of sea cucumber exploitation in particular coast waters. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, um, for me personally, I haven't seen a lot of uh, work for sea cucumbers uh, recently, especially uh, only mostly on, on culture. But for stock assessments, I, I think we need to um, uh, beef up our efforts in, in doing, uh, you know, stock assessment or um, looking at the wild populations. And there's so many species of sea cucumbers in the country. And, uh, and many of those are already, as I've said, uh, bawal na, the, the, the teats, no, um, uh, are already, um, in fact, I just posted that one a couple of weeks ago in Doc Muji page about the uh, a species of uh, sea cucumber that were uh, put in the endangered species list. No? And so, uh, ano na sila, considered as uh, uh, bawal or reg uh, prohibited in the country. Are there legal, uh, from Ira Gem, are there legal constraints in procuring brood stocks of H. cabra, considering that it is already, already endangered? I'm not sure, I, I, I don't know if H. cabra is the one uh, already in uh, in the red list, I'm not sure, Ateno Nets. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the question is the legal constraints in procuring brood stocks mm -hmm. for H. Cabra. Parang hindi naman bawal, no? It's not. It's oh, not. But, but, but sir, uh, oh, there, is, size. there is a study, uh, but uh, there's a study of uh, Butangko and Kim in 2017. The, there are there's uh, uh, unique genetic stocks. Right. So right. what uh, what will he do with in buying the good stock? If he's going to just um, sell it in the market or what? But if, he, if, he, if it will be used for for hatchery, then I think we have to you know. Uh, I know for the genetic uh, uh, right, viability right. of the but, uh, but but in in terms of the existing FAO, uh, is there a legal constraint for procuring age scabra, ma'am? Or may size regulation ba pagkuha ng age scabra? Uh, uh, I'm actually downloading the. It's uh, actually in the BPAR. Yes. AC number two four eight, but. Uh, haven't explored that. Okay, maybe you can. Maybe uh, it's more size. Uh, it, it's okay to, to procure. Procure. It's mm. yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, I think. Pedi uh, can, can the participants ask for a presentation? Uh, uh, sure. Mom, Kristan, uh, and uh, yes, Tino Okay. Yes, so we'll also. save it as PDF then. Okay. And then, and then the secretariat the maybe can distribute it later. Uh, region 5 uh, from uh, Daniel Oliver Tan. Region 5 possible site for assessment is the leeward side of Catanduanes Island on the basis of the presence of seagrass areas, which is a habitat of choice for H. cabra. So see uh, Daniel Tan uh, mentioning uh, possible areas for, for assessment of uh, H. cabra in Catanduanes. And okay, those are very good information. From Marlon, Marlon Mortos, uh, from MSU Naawan, where do you release your sunfish juveniles after the floating hapa stage or during the hapa stage? Are going to release it where the brood stock collected? Um, I, I guess. Um, uh, okay, go ahead. Here in D1, uh, yeah. we, we only release our seeds in the uh, nearby areas, we do not go out of, uh, of like, for example, go out of the, the province because we know uh, that, uh, like, for example, 
we cannot release our stocks outside of uh, the, um, like from from V1 to the Liti Golf area outside of the Liti Golf area. Uh, that's why um, for 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 the LGUs which are requesting for seeds for the for receding of sea cucumber, we always tell them that you can we can provide you with seeds. However, you have to provide us with the brood stock, and then we will uh, uh, we will let them spawn and rear them uh, to juveniles, and then we will return all the the seeds produced by the brood stock taken from your site. Uh, uh, be okay. back again, brought again to the to the, to okay. the site where the brood stock were taken. That's okay. what we okay. always our protocol. Okay, so you get the brood stock from the area. You you grow the the babies and then you put it back there. Tama po ba? Yes. Please. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. I guess that that was answered from Chris Hill Bernat Bernante Ancla. Uh, yeah, I guess this is uh, similar. How to eliminate copepods, Sir Kristan? Maybe you can just quickly reiterate what do you do for now? Yes, uh, what we do is to increase lang yung ano. Uh, aside, from improving, aside from improving the water quality, you have to uh, frequently change uh, the water in the tanks if it's in the larval system. But there are also uh, recommendations uh, to uh, put antibiotics or what they call that uh, disinfectant. Uh, no, but we have not tried that, so that okay. uh, our experiments won't be affected by any other factors. Okay. From Azrien Ariana, one question: Does any of your tanks had troubles with bloodworms infestation? If yes, yes. how do you overcome that? Uh, Mukhang, uh, mukhang si Azrien is uh, doing uh, si cucumber hatchery. Go ahead. Uh, if nagkakaroon ng blood worm sometimes, uh, we just manually pick those. Ano? But if uh, it's uh, very, uh, or increase lang the water change. Pero pag ma, ano talaga, uh, if it's very difficult for you to do that manually, then yung tendency namin is to just... Uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, dispose of the, ano, yung malit na tank na yun. Dispose then the tank. Then redo the trial again. Oh. Uh, Kasi okay. the tendency, mamama, uh, the larvae or the juveniles will just die after uh, several days. Nice. So, uh, just, just curious, where, where, where does the blood worms come from? The, the water where coming in? From the nearby source water. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, actually, yeah. They just, I think they just uh, uh, come in from the supply as a uh, very as, small worm. Then ah, grow, okay, and then they grow. Oh. And, and they grow fast, I would think, because you. Yeah, I guess. Think? Yeah, they, yes, yes, they uh, grow fast. Yeah. Yeah. But only in the sea cucumber hatchery, all the hatcheries are in, in Giwan yeah. uh, experience are experiencing blood worms. Blood worms. Okay. Uh, again, blood worms, another <laughs> interesting topic that you can do for your thesis. So many things to learn. Okay. Uh, how much are the, from uh, Dan, Tan, Daniel Tan Olet, how much are the juveniles that are being called, being sold by the hatcheries to be used for grow out purposes? Do you sell it by length or by grams? Okay. I, of course, you have to sell it by grams, by weight. Ah, by grams. Okay. Why, why is that? Why is that? It's difficult to measure them. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, the sea cucumbers, when you the water, like, yeah. they will just shrink. So you really have to weigh them. Mm -hmm. okay. And, of course, the, in the market, uh, the basis for selling is, of course, the weight. The weight, okay. Well, that makes more sense and easier to to sell. <laughs> okay. So there are categories for uh, for sea cucumbers. For the dried sea cucumbers, we have the large, the extra oh, large. Okay. Side. When it's when it's already dried, when it's already yeah, yeah, dried, yeah. Uh, okay. You you we, there's measurement already. But from juvenile to grow out, it's by by weight. By weight, yeah, by weight. More or less. Okay. So, Love Carl from Love Carl, what was the feeding frequency used 
and was it the same all throughout from larvae to to grow out maybe or to i mean to happen it siguro from juvenile and what did you use for cell density quantification of the nut food kytoceros for the larval production uh, uh we just have to maintain the uh concentration of the microalgae so every day we have to monitor the density of the microalgae okay. if uh, this uh, setup has lesser microalgae we just have to add up uh add up Depending on uh, the the calculation of oh. using the dilution method. Okay, so it's not uh, it's, it's not uh, how many times you feed, but it's the the level of the feeds in the water, something like that. Yeah, yeah. but of course in the hatchery, it's very very uh, it's inconvenient to everyday measure. Yes, yes. The microalgae. What we are applying right now is that we measure uh, uh, we estimate the concentration of the microalgae per liter per liter okay and then um, the sec next question how do you quantify the cell density of the nut food kytoceros for example uh, of course we use a uh, basic microscopy counting under microscope sampling then to determine the concentration and the density for uh, the microalgae microscopy it's uh, using uh, hematometer or something like that yeah no. yeah yes yeah. Okay. Okay, from Billy Piamonte Subang, uh siguro interested si sir na mag grow out because the the uh, her his question is that are there already enough supplies of hatchery produced aged cabra seed stocks juveniles in the Philippines that can be supplied to those that are interested in grow out culture of such species. May uh, is there already enough supplies of hatchery produced seed stocks? I don't Each think cabra. so. Uh, I think okay. there's not yet enough supply. supply when it comes from the hatchery. Like for example, here in, in Eastern Visayas, uh, I think we, we are only the, the uh, D1 is the only hatchery that we for CQ. Uh, um, it's a, it's a, uh, Eastern Visayas, it's only D1 and CQDEC who have the hatchery for cucumber. So I think uh, the government should have more uh, legislated mm. hatcheries for cucumber in order to have uh, enough uh, supplies for, in terms of uh, rearing deal for aquaculture purposes or for stock enhancement purposes. Uh. Because uh, uh, if, 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 if you have the right uh, size, uh, when we do uh, the stock enhancement, the, the 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 breeding natural breeding would be would uh, would help in the production of sea cucumbers. Uh, and, and and to that to that point, uh, Tinonet, um, uh, it's it's uh, interesting why I mean uh, the source of aged cabra seed stocks is not not so much apparently um it's not yet being sort of uh being mainstream or it's not mainstream yet although the the technology is there right in in terms of uh breeding hatchery in fact also CFDEC is is doing uh its own breeding hatchery programs um what do you think is is I don't know, the the reason why it's not picking up that much and I mean in terms of the take up of the commercial uh, sector um, maybe they don't know about it yet or a lot of uh, legal constraints or or maybe in the the length of the production is there a cost effective analysis or cost benefit analysis already done for breeding um, H cabra actually doc uh, the main uh, problem or limitation that uh, why scabra is not really intense uh, uh, mm -hmm. commercialization or intensification of rearing is not uh, done uh, just anywhere in the, uh, mm -hmm. just any hatchery is because we are protecting the genetic stock of each location mm -hmm. so we cannot just uh, uh, rear or distribute the seeds just anywhere in, uh, for example okay. in uh, mm -hmm. we cannot just distribute the seeds from all over the uh, all over okay. the water service size because I the UPMSI they've conducted a study 
even in Eastern Visayas, the the, the genetic stock of sea cucumber in the Pacific side mm. is very different from uh, like the Gulf. So what we are doing here is just we only uh, release those seeds na okay. naproduce naman from the uh, Lake Bigol. So, it, so it has to be a, a localized thing. Um, yeah. Um, sp spreading the, kumaga, the the technology, teaching the the farmers, for example, mm -hmm. but then only um, in, in their respective uh, areas. Uh, that's where the collection of the broodstock and uh, the rearing would happen. Something but like of that. Of course, the fundamental uh, requirements for also a hatchery is to be. Yeah, you you, or, you would also need a, a nice, uh, uh, clean uh, coastal uh, area, right? <laughs> to be able and to... Of course, do... you, a hatchery must also uh, know where to release these seeds, uh, these right. juveniles right. after hatching. Right, 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 right. That's why you need a, a coastal area adjacent to your farm that that yes. is relatively clean so that... Uh, you you will you'll have an optimum harvest something like that yes. okay uh from uh chrisil bernate ancla ulet is there any other method aside from spirulina to be applied during mating of scabra and then uh, she posted the the law here i guess the 2013 size regulation for sea cucumber collection so everyone can click this one and download it okay so the the spirulina method um any comment on that? The spirulina method can be actually replaced by using other microalgal paste. So there are a variety of microalgal paste available commercially also. Okay. So you can opt to choose those other microalgal paste. But okay. in our hatchery, we use, we use spirulina. And even in CFDEC and UPMSI, they're using spirulina. Okay. Yeah, when any uh, other uh, food uh, shop uh, aside from spirulina. Okay, there there are available. Uh, it's okay to use other species. Okay, uh, and then uh, does biofouling? I guess na sagot na to, but maybe you would uh, like to re reiterate: Does biofouling of the hapa nets affect the growth and survival of the sea cucumber? We we said that there's. There's a, there's an effect, right? But uh, uh, exactly how, what, when, which, lahat na ng question eh hindi pa clear. Tama, okay. And then uh, Raymond Toledo, uh, sea cucumber has been shipped out from Catanduanes, collection site said to be from Karamoan Peninsula, the Makeda Channel, especially. Palumbanes Island. So maybe Raymond is, is uh, mentioning some activities going on in Catanduanes uh, about mm -hmm. sea cucumber. Okay, thank you very much, Raymond, for that information. So Catanduanes daw, ma'am, uh, although ang nakalagay ay karamoan makeda channel. Um, eto, kay, kay Chrisil, very active si ma'am Chrisil. No? Uh, I think very interested siya. Can you share some antibiotics to be applied to control the contaminants, just in case po when we're conducting breeding po. Antibiotics daw. Do you use? I forgot the name of the chemical or the... Uh, yeah, it's PUR. What? Uh, it's P a PUR. Yeah, PUR. PUR. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it can be purchased from BioSolution. Okay, yeah. PUR is the name. Okay. PUR yung... Disinfectant. Yung disinfectant. Okay. okay. Uh, again, from Marlon from MSU, what do you feed to sunfish larvae after they settled in plates? And also, did you try adding probiotics in your culture? We didn't add didn't any, any probiotics. probiotics. Okay. No okay. And basic microalgal, uh, yung ginamit microalgae yung regimen. Okay. Yung mga, no. uh, okay. And again, probiotics. Maybe, uh, uh, Marlan, you can use that for your thesis and check whether the probiotics can help. That, that's, I think that's a very good idea. Hypo, uh, from Marjorie Matan Ramirez. Uh, Hypo, um, a part of my thesis methodology is to condition the sea cucumber stocks 
to be collected during by sampling. Can you recommend a method or design for conditioning wild collect collected stocks? So, ibig sabihin, uh, umpisa pa lang siya. Paano niyo daw kinocondition yung collected stocks? Mga adult, sige, kung verse ba yan daw, I guess. Uh, I would Either, think uh, it might be brood stocks, maybe. maybe. Actually, in the paper, yeah. there is a, a method for, uh, for brood stock uh, maintenance in pens. So, okay. Before spawning, of course, after collection, we have to condition the brood stocks or the CG cucumbers for at least uh, one week. Yeah, what, what do you do more or less uh, for the just conditioning? Like, you just let it there, let it uh, sit there and be happy, something like that? Yes, yes. 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 But you just uh, uh, you have to uh, acclimate. Have a acclimate. Oh, yeah, ac yeah. Acclimate to the water or something. Okay. Uh, again, uh, I think this is related. What is the feasibility for the establishment of a commercial scale hatchery of H. cabra in the Philippines, also with the consideration for the genetic variance between habitats? I guess this was answered already. Um, there's potential for it, although it's not uh, rec uh, it's not uh, recommended that you you get uh, seeds from everywhere and then you you disperse them to everywhere in the Philippines. It has to be localized because of the genetic variations or uh, stock uh, delineation of, of many of these uh, sea cucumbers. So I guess that there's a potential there. Um, um, we just, I guess, need to, to have some champions to, to push for the uh, sea cucumber hatchery. Uh, NFRDI will continue to provide new technologies and techniques no, to support breeding, but of course, it's not our mandate to 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 co bit bit or to baton the commercial scale hatchery of the H cabra. It has to be some somebody else. I mean, uh, maybe uh, some groups, maybe some associations, and even some universe uh, um, NGOs, perhaps. Okay, from Alfred Rabaka. In terms of glow algal feed concentrations, you experimented on different concentrations, no? ten thousand to fifty thousand. Was the feed concentrations consistently fed throughout the whole duration of larval reeling, or does it change as the larval development changes, such as from early auricularia to late auricularia or to pentacula, pentactula stage? Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, they're uh, increasing the uh, microalgal concentration should be done since it's the protocol as well. Uh, I wasn't. I was able to mention it that uh, during the production, uh, during the larval rearing, when you uh, begin with the with the mid auricularia larvae, you have to increase the uh, uh, the microalgal concentration. So what happened in the experiment is that for the ten thousand cells per ml, we maintained uh, that base uh, concentration. Then the other setups were increased to thirty thousand, and the other setups were increased to fifty thousand cells per ml. Okay, and uh, uh, maybe this is the last uh, uh, info, uh, last uh, comment from Sir Ferds ulit. No? Um, share lang. In Palawan, hindi ko rin alam to. No? Nung, ngayon ko lang narinig. Thank you for the information, Sir Ferds. Nauso na uh, ang bilihin, meaning uh, in Palawan, uh, there's buying of fresh rather than dried sea cucumbers. Depends on the buyer. Uh, the farm grade price depends on the, the, the buyer. Uh, uh, na na ng lamang loob. So there, there's no innards. 200 grams is 400 per kilo. 300 grammers is 500 pesos per kilo. 400 gram to 500 gram, 550 per kilo. 600 gram to 7 gram, 700 grams, 600 per kilo. No, no innards. How about in Giwan? Uh, is this happening? So Sir Ferd said there, there's trade in fresh sea cucumber in, in Palawan right now. Is it happening in Giwan? Uh, I think uh, it's also the same in Giwan. That's, uh, that's the trend. They will buy the fresh uh, sea cucumber and they will take the, the you know, the intestines and then uh, that's uh, uh, you know, you uh, that's the one that will dry. Uh, that's, ah, that's the, the one. But I don't know if 
price per kilo if it's the same. Well, I am not, I'm not sure if the price per gram is the same in Palawan, but this that's the same thing. We buy fresh and then we get the the, uh, the entrails. And then the, the buyer will dry it, something like that. Yes, yes. And but then they will there... be the one to, yeah, to is, there, in, yeah. is there a is there a practice, ma'am, no the the catcher is the one drying it and then they sell it at uh as, as dry. Yes. So, uh, so, uh, uh, here in the locality in Giwan, around Giwan, uh -huh. there's none, but there are in the like in Suluan, which is very far, they're uh -huh. doing the drying uh, before the market, but if the fisherman is only from G1, they, they opt to, uh, to sell it. fresh, yes, fresh. instead of oh. trying them. Oh. Before. Yeah, because they, they need the money. Uh, some of them they, they need the money that. right away. Oh. Yeah, and also uh, in the, the buyers have the you know, standards uh, in, in drying, and some of the fisher folk do not know. How to 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 keep the the standard uh, size, right, the right. standard drying method. So the uh, instead of drying them, they hope to sell them fresh uh, yeah. after collecting it from the wild. And this is for the wild uh, wild uh, collections. No? Yeah. That's that's why. Uh, and and I, I I understand it. It's being regulated now the the collection because. Uh, I think there are indications of over exploitation already. That is why we really, really need to boost these uh, culture systems for age cabra. If we want to help livelihoods and if we want to help conserve and even um, um, repopulate some of the population, or some of the age cabra areas that have been, uh, you know. Um, um, over collected uh, through the years so i guess uh, I, I think that's the last comment um, and uh, can we give a big round of applause to mam nonets and christian for that uh, a very good presentation um, a lot lots of information i i learned a lot uh, uh, from from this uh, session so thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, can you can we give uh, Atinonets and Pistan a, a virtual clap there? I think you can you can uh, thank you guys. Uh, click there. Uh, para naman ma inspire din sila to to continue their work. Ayan. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for all your questions and your comments and your your inputs. No? Uh, it will help us um, improve, to improve our research work to to go into other work that we needed to we need to do um, and also of course para for information of everyone uh, remember uh, sabi nga ng high school musical we're, we're all in this together so hindi lang po kami sa NFRDI yung kailangan pong gumagawa ng mga research we've uh, narrated a lot of different research questions on sea, sea cucumbers that needs answers and um um, the problem with that one is uh, hindi po namin kayang mag-isa sa NFRDI to answer all these things. So we, we enjoin everyone, uh, if you can pick up some of those research questions and, uh, and use that for your uh, thesis, no? for your, or your master's thesis, or your PhD thesis, or even for your uh, research work when you're done with your graduate school, et cetera, et cetera. Or even when you do your own business, for example, and putting up your own sea cucumber hatchery. So I guess with that one, thank you very much for uh, being with us uh, this afternoon. And we, we hope to see you in future TPJF webinar um, series. Uh, we have lots of nice um, papers um, ready for you uh, in the coming month. So again, maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, uh, pasa ko na sa iyo, Sai. And again, thank you very much to our pala for our foreign foreign participants. I, I we do hope that uh, you join us again in in future webinars of of NFRDI and TPJF and uh, invite your friends um, to also join us. Thank you. Go ahead, Sai. Thank you very much, Doc Mugi, as well as our 
speakers and participants. So, I hope lahat po tayo nag-enjoy sa ating mga natutunan. And I would just like to remind our participants to kindly fill out the evaluation form. I posted it on our chat box po. And for those who would like to receive a certificate of participation, just reply to our invitation email with your full name and affiliation. Or you may email it to journal.nfrdi at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much. And uh, please watch out for our future webinars. Have a nice day and stay picture. safe. Shy picture. Ah, sige po. Uh, yeah, pwede picture. po bang i-request namin na i-on po natin na ating videos? Quickly para... lang po, quickly. Paki-on po yung ating videos so we can take a picture. Ayan, makita namin kayo live. Thank you and very see... much po. And don't Ready forget ka? to like uh, NFRDI Philippines po sa aming FB page. Ayun uh, po yung bilin ni ma'am. <laughs> Please like our FB page para po ma-monitor ma nyo what's happening with NFRDI. Okay, bonus. Yan. MC Yan. count ka ha. One, two, three, smile po, smile. And wait lang po, another batch. Huwag mo po muna i-walk yung camera nyo. Yeah, and thank you. Shout out to Surfords. Uh, there's uh, Dylan. Dylan is here. Um, oh, well. And if you have further questions, please don't hesitate to communicate to us um, at uh, our FB page, at the Secretariat, and even to our speakers. And thank you very much, Bob. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hope thank to you see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Po. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Invite your friends, uh, future Tenonets, Kristan, great job. More, more re outputs to come. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Kristan. Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Shout out daw, Doc. <laughs> Nakamit ka po, Doc. Ayan. Salita ka nga, Kat. Kasi puro yung posing mo yung nakikita ko eh. Saan yung video mo, Kat? Ayaw. <laughs> Ala ka. Kaya ayaw mo magpakita. Tignan. <laughs> Kamusta? Hi, Ate Kat. <laughs> Ayan. Uh, can we ask for the PowerPoint of the presentation? Sai, how can yes, you send po. that one? Uh, yung, uh, email? Since nakapag-register naman po sila, Apo, may ah, okay. send ko po sa email nila yung PDF. Okay. Uh, for those who are registered, they will, uh, Sai will send the presentations to your email. Yes. Or the PDF yes. lang po. No? PDF, para yes. mas mababa pa sa yung Sai. Mm -mm. Yes. Okay. Kat, ba tayo mo magsalita? Dadak! Ayan! <laughs> Nasaan ka na sa sasakyan ka? Apo! Oh, may, may di driver okay. kaya ata dyan. Ah. <laughs> Sayang ko eh. Kamusta family? Ayos naman. <laughs> Sobrang nakaka-inspired po. Pag <laughs> ano? 